So Barrett, mm-hmm. what is up, dog? What's up? You remember when we went out to the deck and we measured this, the height from the top of the deck down to the ground, or actually, we actually put that six by six there and we wanted to make that the top of our concrete? Yeah. Well, that's right there, see? Mm-hmm. And you remember when we said we wanted it to be 90 inches? So we've got that at 90. So what I was gonna do is show people uh, the, some of the common mistakes on laying out stringers. This, I've made this thing, the stringer, kind of a separate thing here. That's the blue thing, okay? Oh, okay. Like that, you see? Mm -hmm. So just to kind of highlight it. But the biggest mistake that people make uh, in laying out stairs is at the top, right here, in this condition, and at the bottom this condition right here. So let's just start out with the bottom. Once we decided our our rise, which was 90 inches, that gave us 12 risers at 7.5 inches each, okay? So you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, the deck is the 12th riser. Move this over a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. That. So your stringer only has 11 risers, even though there's 12 total. One of the mistakes people make is not laying out these stringers in advance. Let's look at the bottom, okay? But here, here's what I want to stress, okay? If, you, if you'll get like a free CAD program, like SketchUp has a free version, I think it's called Maker or something like that. You need to draw these out at full scale, full, like we're not, this is not to scale, this is full size. Like this is, you know, from the top of that to the ground is eight feet. You can't see that, but we've drawn this full scale. So what you're able to do is you're actually able to measure handy things. Like I can go from the longest point of my stringer there to the longest point of my stringer here. And I can say, oh, it's 11 feet four and seven eighths. So I, I probably should have got a 14 footer. You know, we bought a 12 footer. It looks like we're okay. I was just guessing. <laughs> Uh, it's a good thing I have some experience in this or I would have screwed it up. But, you know, before I had this drawn, two stringer or two risers shorter than this. So we kind of got lucky on the length. But see, I should have drawn this out first, Barrett. Huh. I should have, we should have measured our rise and run. We should have drawn this out. And then I should have gone to Home Depot after I figured out how long my stringer needs to be. And we're going to lay that out in a second. That's what's going to be interesting about this video. So then, uh, if you move in here, you'll see that the stringer uh, is cut, you know, all these are seven and a half inches, seven and a half, seven and a half, and seven and a half is a common riser height, and a common um, uh, tread is 10, and the reason is, is because most of your materials, are like a, or two by 12s or whatever, are 11 and a quarter, so you can see that's 11 inches, but it would be hanging over a little bit more because um, you're supposed to have a one inch nose, you know, somewhere between one inch and a quarter nose on your stair. The other thing you need to know is what your finished materials are for where you're gonna land and up here, where you're going to, you know, what flooring you're gonna put at the top. I know I'm gonna use a one inch decking material up here. And the reason that's important is because I'm going to measure down from the top of my deck framing seven and a half inches and that's where the stringer, the top of our stringer is going to go because I know I'm going to add an inch here, but I'm also going to add an inch on top of that so it's a relative. Down here would be, say I'm going to put, um, say I'm going to put a two inch stone um, on this uh, concrete down here, which we might. I need to ask the owner if we're going to do that or not. You see, all of a sudden things change now because if this was the top of my concrete, my stringer would have to go ahead and extend on down, come over and come up. Why is that not drawing in there? And SketchUp wants to do funky stuff. Like make all these little you see, 
you see now my stringer the bottom riser would have to be eight and a half inches so you need to know I'm going to undo all this because I know what our you need to know what your finish is on the bottom and you need to draw it uh, so that you will know what this dimension is right here in our case it's six and a half because we have this simple condition of a concrete pad the most that he may do is put stamped concrete on top of that which is only about three inch to a half inch thick and that's not going to really bother our uh, bottom riser much so we're going to base ours on this but you see now barrett and i can go in the shop uh, with confidence and we're going to print this out and i'll put dimensions on it and we'll use that to to uh, cut the stringer what do you think barrett cool say hi to yourself hi oh, barrett <laughs> If I was going to print this out for a job, you know, I'd put it on a title block. I'd put, you know, real dimensions on it and all that. But since it's for us here in the shop, I just put some quick dimensions on it. Mm -hmm. As you can see here, the way you start out is hopefully our 2 by 12 is long enough. But you'll put your framing square on 7.5 inches here, whatever your rise is, and 10 here. Like that. Let's make sure and run it. In our case, we need to run it all the way out to the end because we're going to run out of board. And what I usually do is I'll usually just put myself a little tick mark there. Flip this over like this. Make sure you're still on 10. And then you'll make that mark. The mark we just made, look here. See that down part right there? Mm -hmm. that's that part and this is your tread see so Barrett we needed to I needed to move this up so what I did was I just put my framing square <laughs> <laughs> on there and marked the other side of it so now I'm going to go from this point so all I'm going to do is come down through here and put this on seven and a half this on ten and do this okay so i'm going to do that for what 11 times what you do is something like your, that yeah just put your hand there so it doesn't move oh, i'm left-handed <laughs> No left-handedness. I'm having to <laughs> do backwards here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you just want to keep mm -hmm. these points. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Make sure it stays on seven and a half and ten to make sure your angle stays correct. So Barrett's going to try it left-handed this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see if it works better. <laughs> it's weird getting it lined up. Yeah, you gotta keep it on seven and a half and ten, or your. See if you don't, and hold that down firm, because your steps will be at a level, or one will be level and one won't if you're not careful. So Barrett was asking, how do you keep it from moving around? What I do is I use my finger. I put my finger here, and see that kind of gives you a pivot point. Yeah. And then I put my other finger over here on ten. See, and I can just keep going back and forth. And I get it right, and since I'm happy with it, I put a lot of pressure down right here so it won't move. Do it like that. Yeah. A lot faster that way, that's for sure. Yeah. And if we had those little knobs. Oh, that was oh, bad. Yeah, seven and a half. <laughs> seven and a half and ten, man. Not nine and a half. <laughs> seven and a half and ten. If we had those little knobs that just screw on to the, I've got some somewhere over there in that one of those bags or under here. It's the shop's a mess. I do this so well. What? Well, what you do is you mark out the line that you didn't there. Like now, put you a squiggle mark. Oh, that was seven. <laughs> oh my god. What? What you do? I did seven instead of seven. Oh, well, we'll check them all. 
But what you do is the line you're not going to use, you'll just squiggle it out so the saw may know not to cut it. Okay, so I'm going to mark out the left-handed marks. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. There. <laughs> so we're on our last riser, okay? And we know this one only goes down from our drawing, as Bob Vila or Norm Abram used to say, our drawing. <laughs> uh, you would put this on 10. See right here, Barrett? Yeah. Get that squared up with your right-handed line. And then, just kidding you. Come down, mm -hmm. come down to six and a half, make yourself a mark. Okay. Um, you know, you can just go on through if you want to, but you need to make a mark at six and a half, because what we're gonna do now is just continue this line back. <coughs> and that, that's that six and a half. Now you got to be careful with these when well, they get kind of thin. You got to go, mm -hmm. you know, easy on the way this grain is. See how the grain's going straight? Yeah. These little triangles will want to pop off. If I were to just draw a line from there to there, that triangle likes to pop off. So you got to be careful with them. So, Barrett, we're ready to cut now. Now, on this, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this all the way off, but then I'm going to stop and show you something over here. Cut our AK saw. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut to this point right here, okay? The only way to get a round blade to cut all the way to this point on the back side would be to cut it like another inch or so past. We don't want to do that because it's going to yeah. weaken our stringers. So what we're going to do is just cut to there. Dang, that was really close. We'll come back with our our AK saw. All right, so Barrett, this saw hadn't been used in a long time, so I need to put some beeswax or something on it. So I'm just gonna pop, <laughs> nice. gonna pop that off. And, uh, then, but you see, because I didn't cut all the way through, I haven't hurt the stringer any. And I'm not exactly getting it, but clean it up yeah the, nice the point the point is we're we're not cutting past this a lot of your framing carpenters will cut past this mm -hmm. both ways and for framing i guess it's okay but for outdoor stairs you want this to be neat and clean okay so what we're going to do bear is we're going to go down through here and cut all these out and we'll show the result after that <laughs> you see the reason you're locking them up is because they're the way they're cut you won't you won't lock snap that off I see, yeah. so you're, you're knocking them up don't lock her up knock it up <laughs> shop talk I was trying to film slow motion and I didn't get it, didn't get it cut out clean, Barrett. See what happens when you try to do multitask filmography. And... Mm -hmm. Okay, that's better. So what have we got? We're running out of battery here, so we gotta <laughs> stop for now. But looks good, doesn't it? Yeah, one stringer. Doing the drawing really made this easy. You know, if you're, because what we were able to do, let me lay that down over there, Barrett. We were able to check our lengths, you know, from end to end before we cut it to verify that we had enough. I mean, you can count them, right? <laughs> but trust me, I've seen people get confused before. <laughs> and uh, it just it's just a way of double checking. You always want to lay these things out in a drawing. Um, those... 
you'll eliminate all of the mistakes that people make on stairs uh, if you just do a simple drawing before you do it to, to scale either to scale on paper the problem with doing it to scale on paper is that you know if you'll find you a free cheap open source CAD software you can draw this out to full size then you can measure the entire length of it you know the risers and the treads and all that so we gotta clean this mess up Barrett. yep <laughs> Nice.